<laughs> Lenovo, you went to Hungary. Yes. Uh, EMEA, tell us all about it. What happened? And I left Hungary. But um, 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 <laughs> so EMEA. Dad joke. Dad joke. I know. I know. Oh, still pretty oh, good. My dog. I'm sorry. Um, it's all good. And so we love dogs on the uh, podcast. We love dogs, and he's a he's a happy dog. Hey, come here, Willie. So anyway, so um, EMEA analysts. Summer. first off, Budapest is a beautiful city. Um, great people, uh, great culture, all that neat stuff. So here are my three big takeaways from um, from the EMEA summit. First off, anybody who thinks of Lenovo from five years ago or four years ago needs to pull their head out of the sand. This company is doing so much um, across so many different fronts. When you look at the growth they've had in the server space, they're number three uh, in servers right now. I think they're number four in storage. They are, they are legitimately there um, in the U.S., in North America, in Europe, and, and around the world. That was, a, that was my kind of big high-level takeaway. But they focused on three areas. Security, you're going to be shocked. Security, AI, and sustainability. Who, <laughs> right? Yep. Well, that sounds so familiar. Novel. Yes. Who would have thunk, right? So novel. But, I mean, you know, look, everybody is talking about it. You have to have your voice. Um, I actually walked away from there being a little bit amazed at what they have done on the security front. Um, you know, there are companies that go that are out there and do a great job of telling the story around security server companies and companies that do a great job of implementing technology. And they've all done a great job and they have their all have their own value add. But, you know, um, Lenovo looks at security in kind of three different ways, right? There's supply chain. Um, how do you secure your supply chain, assure that it's, it's uh, secure? There is operations. How do you deliver and uh, make sure that your business processes are fully secure to not introduce any threats. And that all leads into the third thing, with this, which is technology, right? We talk about platform root of trust. We talk about attestation, so on and so forth. They've done an amazing job, and they've, done, they've gone through so, many, so much scrutiny over the last few years, over the last 10 years or so, that you know, it has really hardened their security posture. Um, I actually did a Forbes piece, which I think will go live on uh, Monday, um, on kind of what they've done around security, that it's worth taking a look at. It's not to to pump up viewership of my article, but it really well, there's it should be. Going on. well, yeah. I mean, I'm sh I'm shameless when it comes to that, Matt. You should All right, well go ahead and read. But it but oh, it man. does a good, it does a I think it it brings a lot of light to what they've done around the security side. That's the first thing. Second is AI and kind of the movement they've made. You know, they've invested a lot of money. They had an announcement this week, uh, the SR675 AMD based with uh, NVIDIA H100s. Um, they did some smart uh, edge platforms, but they talked about the practical use of AI and, and how they've stood up AI out in the, in the real world. And while I can't give names, you know, they essentially, there are sectors that they essentially own from an, an edge and a smart edge perspective. Retail and fast food are two of them, a food service. You can't go into any restaurant um, or any fast food restaurant without looking down at the kiosk and seeing a Lenovo logo, it seems. Um, or the, yeah, the they've, major kinda, they've kind of blown NCR and IBM out of the water. They <laughs> really have. And that's all AI driven. You know, you think about cameras that are lit up that see cars coming through and recognize the driver and know that that person loves French fries. So drop an extra bin down. I mean, they, they had great stories around what they're doing on the AI front. Um, but they did a, a, they have a very cohesive uh, and kind of um, cohesive and holistic, I guess the same thing, a view of AI and how they're standing it up. And I love to hear about their partnerships and how they're standing up the ecosystem. Third thing is sustainability. Um, my big takeaway is us in the US, while we talk about it a lot, we aren't doing anything compared to EMEA. Um, my gosh, when you go into a hotel and you can't turn your thermostat down below 23 degrees Celsius, you're in for a long stay. Um, <laughs> here in the U.S., I have it down to like 52. Um, but, you know, uh, they talk about sustainability in many, many ways and kind of how they're enabling that. It becomes a pillar of everything they do. And even through TrueScale, they talk about TrueScale is a economic uh, part of it, right? Driving down cost, agility aspect to it, right? Being able to do things faster, but also sustainability, right? Getting more workloads on, starting to actually drive up utilization of resources so that your carbon footprint goes down. So really great story. Um, I'm kind of excited to see what they're going to do here in the next couple of years on the um, on the AI front and how they're going to start telling that story to the broader audience. Because my one criticism, 
is they don't tell their story enough, right? They have all these, it's their greatest kept secret. They do all these great things, but they don't really, they don't really kind of um, amplify that message out to the marketplace a lot. Yeah. So on the AI stuff, uh, I know that in the show notes, so Lenovo did a, did a uh, press release talking about what they're doing in, uh, by the way, Matt, do you need to leave? I do. Yeah. I'm sorry. All right. Hey, great to see you. Maybe yeah, next yeah. time, right? You can you can schedule uh, you know, doctor's appointments uh, that aren't on during the podcast. But I know I'm no, so sorry. Just, no, we take uh, we, we take uh, um, uh, analysts uh, seriously here, and we appreciate them and more insights and strategy. We want them to be very healthy. So yeah, thank you. Well, thank wish you. me luck. I'm going to be filled with nitrous oxide in about uh, 15 minutes. So that's fun. Do they do uh, carry yeah. out? By chance? I'm hoping. I'm going to ask about it. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thanks, Matt. Yeah. But anyways, the uh, what I wanted to add on uh, on Lenovo was that first of all, everybody wants to get their AI AI mojo and and magic and get their stock price going. Yeah. Uh, the cool part is that is that <laughs> Lenovo bought real numbers, right? Two billion dollars uh, in AI sales, and also kind of talked about their lineage the past seven years. Now, albeit when they started. It was really HPC, not AI, and, I, and I've had many debates in, and and um, uh, discussions uh, uh, on this. Uh, but here's the cool part: is they did come out and say, "Hey, we have the most comprehensive platform." And I'm like, "Can I ask a question about that?" That's a pretty bold statement. That is. Uh, what's the basis? And and to their credit, Lenovo uh, showed me right. Hey, here's the amount of AI platforms we have, all the way from the server to the edge. In comparison to the competition, it looked accurate, and so I do think, from a the amount of platforms and the breadth, uh, Lenovo does have the most comprehensive uh, AI platforms uh, out there. So keep it coming, analysts. We love numbers. 